Welcome to Sierra Circuit's HDS Stackup Planner tutorial. Using this tool before you begin your layout design will ensure that your HDI PCB design will be manufacturable the very first time. So let's start. The first thing we do to use this tool is to fill out the board information. We fill out a part number, let's say we call it Sierra Test. A revision number, let's call it 2. And then we fill in estimated size of the PCB. Let's say it's a 4 inch by 4 inch PCB. And then we'll choose a finished thickness. Note that you don't have to choose an exact thickness. Our tool will try to find something that comes close enough. But say your desired thickness is 0 0.062 inches. The next section is the material selection. To help you determine what sort of material will best suit your design needs, we provide a list of 12 materials with their most important properties. We have chosen these specific materials out of the whole list of PCB materials because 1. We have found them to be suitable for HDI PCB manufacturing and 2. They cover almost the entire range of HDI applications. So for each material you can see the type, the typical application areas, the T sub G, the DK values, the DF values, the electrical strength, and the cost factor. Cost factor is a value we have provided to give you a sense for the relative cost of each material. In this case, let's say we choose N4000-13 EPSI. You can see more about this material by selecting this plus symbol and it shows you a lot more characteristics on this material from the data sheets. Alright, so having chosen the material, now we go to the stack up design. The first question we have is, will the outer layers of your final stack up be signal or plane? That's a very key design question and almost every electrical designer knows what the answer for that would be depending on their application and constraints. In our case, let's say we will have signal on the outer layers. Then the tool gives you two choices. Either you can run the tool based on specifications of your most complex BGA in your design or if you already know how many signal layers you need in your design, you can select the layers based workflow. Please note that the rest of this tutorial will be based on the layers based workflow. If you'd like to see the tutorial for the BGA based workflow, please go to our website at www.protoexpress.com and look for another video. Let's say we do have a fairly good idea of the number of signal layers required in the design. Let's say I know that the total number of signal layers in my design is 10 layers. The tool then asks me to select the number of signal plane combinations. So let's say I select six signals and four planes here. And that's it. That's all you need to run the HDI Stackup Planner. So let's click the Run HDI Stackup Planner button to run the tool. So within a period of about five seconds, the tool returns a table of stack up options. In this case, the tool presented six options, option A through option F. Let's look at one of the options. Say we look at option A. It has six signal layers, four plane layers for a total of 10 layers exactly as we wanted. It's a standard construction, not HDI. So it has zero sequential lamps. And then it shows the PCB thickness, 0 0.062 inches, and then there's a series of columns defining cost index information for different technology levels. I will come back to this section later. In the last column, the tool provides a detailed report. Since we know we want an HDI stack up, let's look at another option to see the full report. Option D. Again, option D is six signal layers, four plane layers for a total of 10 layers. This stack up is an HDI stack up with two sequential laminations. Let's look at this option in more detail by clicking on the report. So here we have the stack up planner report. At the top, it summarizes your board info, telling you the part number and revision number, your PCB size, number of layers, PCB thickness, your material selection, and your choice for outer layer being signal or plane. In this case, as we have specified, the diagram shows that the outer layers are signal layers, the bottom is signal, and the top is signal and as you see the green line at the very top and bottom this of course represents the solder mask and then you have the layers in between 
layer 2 is plain, layer 3 signal, layer 4 signal, one more plane, another plane, signal, signal, plane, and then the bottom layer, a signal. In this stack-up representation here, you can clearly see the different signals and planes. The signals have this diagonally shaded representation. The planes are solid orange. And of course, the dielectric material in between is green. The via structures are also shown right here. This right here is a through hole. There are two sequential laminations in the stack-up. And you can see here another through hole drilled in a sublam. The report also shows you a total finish thickness which comes to 0.069 inches, close enough to a requested thickness of 0.062. Here it shows you the finished copper weights. And then it shows you different levels of technologies which are corresponding to the feature sizes. We have created the technology level categories to give you a better sense of the level of technology sophistication required for different traces and different via sizes. The higher the technology level, the finer the via and trace features. So technology level 2 will require finer features than technology level 1 and so on. So here for level 1, the feature sizes listed are mechanical microvia drill is 8 mils, the microvia pad is 6 mils, the drill diameter is 6 mils, the pad diameter is 14 mils, and so on. On level 4, you can go down to 6 mils microvia drill diameter. Of course, as you go up the technology levels, your relative cost is going to be higher. So this cost index just tells you what the relative cost differences you can expect for different technology levels. The via set information section shows you all the possible vias that can form based on this two sequential LAM design. So you have this via from here to here, from top to bottom, and then from layer 1 to layer 2, from layer 2 to layer 3, which also means you could have a via from layer 1 to layer 3, or layer 1 to layer 4. So the different vias are shown over here, represent the density and complexity of connections that you can have in the stack up. If you wanted to look further into this report, you can click on the impedance calculations button to enter the impedance calculator tied into the tool. When you click on it, you can calculate impedances for any given layer. For example, here in layer 3, if I click on the button, the calculator comes up. Note that this calculator tells you what kind of model it is, strip line single-ended or strip line differential pair. You choose between these two using the tabs at the top. Say that in my case, I'm trying to get a 50 ohm impedance. Enter that here and click the calculate trace button to run the calculation. The calculator shows that for 50 ohms, we will need a trace width of 5 mils. To save this data, click the Save button here at the bottom. Now let's try this again on layer 7. This time, let's try a differential pair. Let's say I want to put in a trace width of 6 mils. Click to calculate and it shows me that 86.6 ohms is the impedance that is going to come out. Save that. Note that all the calculations that I'm saving are added to the customized table here. Now, the report can be printed or emailed to your layout designer, and that would be step one of creating a fantastic HDI design.